afternoon, Super Talk Mississippi. You are tuned into your radio happy hour. That's the good things. I'm your host, Rebecca Turner. We are joined by Rhino in the studio today. Now, don't forget to plan your very own one-of-a-kind Mississippi getaway. Everything you need to know is over at visitmississippi.org. And if you are streaming us live from supertalk.fm slash watch or maybe over at Supertalk TV or maybe through your Roku TV devices and all the other ways you can connect, you'll see I'm not alone in the studio today. I have a very beautiful young woman with me, Vivian O'Neill, and she is your 20. 22 Miss Hattiesburg. Hey Vivian. Hey, how's it going? I'm so excited to finally have you in the studio. You yeah. have been um, a guest here on Good Things before, but mm-hmm. you were wearing a different crown, and I think you <laughs> called from a different state. I can't remember. If I you, did. You did. If that was when you did. So your previous crown was Miss uh, Southern Miss, but mm-hmm. the state was Washington D.C. Can you tell us what you were doing there? Yeah. So I had the opportunity to be a press assistant for Senator Roger Wicker from here in Mississippi. Um, I did that for about a year, and it was just an incredible experience, and I met so many wonderful people and um, got to do so so many cool things and fulfill a lot of dreams in, in D.C. for sure. So you probably got to see some real snow while you were in Washington <laughs> compared to what you know we think is great here in Mississippi. And so usually on a Monday we do a Confess It, uh, Vivian, and I thought today would be fun for us to confess who got their feelings hurt because they didn't get any good snow. Usually if snow comes through a certain area— Not everybody in the state ever gets it at one time. That was a little different with the ice. I felt Mm -hmm. like we all got ice that year. But you feel like at least your neighbors, everyone gets to enjoy in the snow. No, this this last, um, you know, over the weekend, it was very spotty. And who got to enjoy, you know, a Sunday afternoon or morning in the snow versus who didn't. So I want to hear your confession, 601-879-4395, or your feelings hurt like mine because we got, like, no snow. (laughs) How How was it in Hattiesburg? Uh, we didn't have any, so it got a little chilly. We usually get uh, we usually get a little bit of ice in the morning, just a light dusting, but that's that's pretty much the extent of it in, in uh, South Mississippi. <laughs> All right, Rhino, you were in Clinton. Where did you get any good snow? Uh, it looked like it might have tried to stick, but it just didn't get cold enough. So it snowed a big. Fat snowflakes, but yeah, nothing. We got stuck. the pretty flurries and all the things, but then looking at some of our neighbors and the in the surrounding zip codes, I was just very jealous <laughs> that you actually had some snow to sort of play into. So just know that if you got your feelings hurt, you weren't um, alone this past uh, this past week. Okay, you have a new title. You are Miss Hattiesburg 2022, or is it 22, 23? 2022. No, 2022. Mm-hmm. When were you crowned? I was crowned in November, at the end of November, so um, I lived in Hattiesburg for years, and so I'm really excited to get to represent them at Miss Miss Mississippi this year. Which is in, I think I saw, 22 weeks until Miss Mississippi. Yes, it is. But But who's counting? But who's counting? I'm sure all the (laughs) girls are counting. How many total remind us who come to compete for Miss Mississippi? You know, it really depends. This year, we're not even done. I think we have maybe one or two more preliminaries left before we go to orientation at the beginning of February. Um, so we're not really sure yet. I think we're in the 30s right now, but in the past, it's been anywhere from uh, in the 30s up into the 50s. So it really just depends. Now, as you reign as Miss Hattiesburg, mm-hmm. um, what do you get to do for the, well, I guess it's coming now down to, to November, but what do you get to do during your, your time as Miss Hattiesburg? Oh, gosh. I, you know, I've, I have some contacts over at the Chamber of Commerce, and so um, they've been really gracious in allowing me to be a part of a lot of community events and local events and ribbon cuttings and things like that. And so um, that's one thing that was really important to me throughout this year is just uh, really digging my feet into um, into the city of Hattiesburg and being very involved in, you know, partnering with the city of Hattiesburg. But uh, aside from that, I've also gotten to continue my work with my social impact initiative, uh, the Capable Curriculum, and continue expanding on that and um, reaching more and more students across the state and more and more educators. Which I think I read up to 5,000 students now have been impacted yeah. by your capable curriculum, yeah. which I think that's one thing that, you know, we should focus more on when it comes to Miss Mississippi. Yes, you ladies are beautiful, and there's no <laughs> way I could walk in those heels and, <laughs> um, and, and do all the things. But a big component of it for years, I think maybe it's changed uh, names, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's a platform or now right. it has a new name. Right. Social but, Impact Initiative. You know, bit of a mouthful. <laughs> a bit of a mouthful, but... But um, but these young women, all of them, are out in our communities, you know, mm-hmm. trying to do uh, do good. So mm-hmm. tell us about your uh, capable curriculum. 
Yeah, so CAPABLE is a disability inclusion curriculum that's targeted toward kindergarten through third grade students. Um, it is essentially a character education resource for teachers um, that seeks to educate on bridging the gap between students with disabilities and students without, and then empowering those students with disabilities to really use their voice and advocate for themselves. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've gotten to, to work on that and expand that a little bit and so um, lots of other little projects on the way so I'm excited to see where it, where it goes. What inspired you to choose that as your well I keep saying platform but you know what it is. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not gonna remember Same the thing. other one. <laughs> your service project I yeah. guess would be another way of saying it. So what inspired you to choose uh, to raise awareness about children with disabilities? Yeah. Uh, well, my younger brother uh, has a very rare muscular disease called nimaline myopathy. Uh, it is a very rare muscular disease that falls under the category of muscular dystrophy, if you know, listeners are, are more uh, familiar with that term. Um, but, I, you know, I was big sister, and so I was kind of like a second mom to him and raising him and, you know, watching uh, the things, the, way, the ways in which that he thrived and then also the ways in which that he struggled. And um, coming from a family of educators, uh, my dad is an administrator and my mom is a, is a teacher and just kind of watching their experience with special education students and with students in wheelchairs and then watching Josiah in that public education system as well um, really impacted uh, you know what I was passionate about and um, kind of pinpointed a problem that I saw in the education system and something that I really wanted to change and um, hopefully capable can continue being a solution for that problem. I think I found here on Good Things Vivian many times people don't know what they don't know is helpful for right. those with disabilities and mm -hmm. oftentimes just you know bringing up the little bit of awareness mm -hmm. or our sharing with how if it's done differently or approached differently means all the world to those um, in wheelchairs mm -hmm. then you know people 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 respond. It's like, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so I think, you know, anytime you can have a good conversation about that. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned um, the Miss, Miss, Miss Wheelchair Mississippi usually uh -huh. stops by the Good Things Studio once a year. And they have always been so gracious, too, with just having the conversation <laughs> of like things to sort of, you know, think about. From your brother's perspective, at least in school, I mean, if we have educators listening. I mean, they, they may be out of school today uh, because of the holiday. Uh -huh. um, what's what what's in the capable curriculum? I mean, how would they get it in their, their classrooms? So there's several different ways. I have a website. It's capablecurriculum.com all across the board. And uh, right there from the very beginning at the homepage, you can download it and look through it. There's a teacher guide. There's a student guide. I've done all the work for you. Um, you can download it and use a virtual version, or um, you can print it off and have a physical copy for all of your students. I, that was one thing that was really important to me is ensuring, you know, like I said, coming from a family of educators, I kind of understand the two things that they have the least of are time and money. And so it's a free resource. It's very easy to download. It's very very flexible in terms of time. You can spend 30 minutes on it, 15 minutes on it. It's really up to you and, you know, the kind of time that you're allotted for character education. Uh, but it's a story and activity and a critical thinking section per day, and it's it's five days. And so I've had teachers um, do it for 15 minutes a day, but I've also had them do it over five weeks, and they spend one week on each lesson. And so it's really up into their own interpretation and the time that they have. But the easiest place for you to get it is on my website, or if you do Instagram, if you're a social media person, uh, the link in my bio will have have uh, the option to download it from the link in my bio on my Instagram. It feels like um, things are shifting and you do see more people with disabilities on the big screen or in commercials yes. or sort of yes. being included in some of those conversations. How important mm -hmm. really is that? If I mean, for those of us who say, oh, you know, it may, it may, it may not be that big of a deal, but mm -hmm. we're not the ones who are living right. with a disability. What does it mean to your brother to turn on TV and see somebody with a disability also acting or whatever right. it may be. Right. You know, it, it's so important, and it, it, that's something that I really wanted to focus on. Um, last year, as I was continuing to implement these uh, these resources, you know, it's like you said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. And until you, you start asking people and including them into the conversation and inviting them to the table and taking those things in, into consideration, a lot of times people don't realize that a restaurant isn't fully wheelchair accessible or there's a business where there's no way for somebody to um, – get into the building who is in a wheelchair. Um, and, and that's happened to me. That's happened to my, or not me personally, but that's happened to my family where we've been out in public and we've struggled with that. And I think a lot of times people just don't notice because they don't think about it. But when you see it or when you, you know, have a personal connection with somebody that, that deals with that, that it really shifts your perspective. And so um, I think it's important that all groups of people in all walks of life are able to see themselves represented within the media. I think that's important for us as a country. Um, and so, you know, that's one thing. This other project that, you know, we may talk about in a little bit is um, my children's book that I just came out with. And so the the biggest, the most important 
thing for me in creating that was that children have the opportunity to see them re- themselves represented uh, in their own media. Because we see that a lot in an adult age demographic and, you know, in commercials and on TV shows, and uh, but not so much in the children's arena. So I think that that's really important that we're um, pushing that message to our children, too. And we will dive into her children's book and more with your Miss Hattiesburg 2022, Miss Vivian O'Neill, coming up next here on Good Things. Better walk, better walk, better walk. Things want to remind you that there are some great things to do in Mississippi from events, unique places to visit. So go to visit Mississippi.org to find out more. You can watch good things on your computer or your mobile device. You can watch it on Roku, Amazon Fire TV devices, even YouTube. But now you can watch Super Talk TV live on C Spire TV. So if you have C Spire TV, you can find Super Talk TV on Channel 70 right next to the Weather Channel. Well, well, it will tell you it's still cold outside, even if you didn't get any in snow. It feels like winter is finally here. And joining me in the studio is Miss Vivian O'Neill. She is Miss Hattiesburg 2022 with 22 weeks until Miss Mississippi. Getting excited about that. But before we get off, uh, you had led us into the fact that you wrote a children's book. Mm-hmm. And so was this a, just an extension of your capable curriculum or was it something that you decided or had always wanted to sort of go in a different direction. I mean, you're already in the schools with your curriculum, right. so it makes sense with the with the book, but um, where did it come from, or how did you uh, inspire to do it? Yeah, well, you know, originally I was kind of turned off by the idea. It was kind of intimidating. I've never considered myself to, you know, writing for children specifically to be my strong suit, and then I came out with the curriculum, and, um, and there was such an incredible, incredibly positive response from educators and from students, and um, I was, so many teachers told me stories about how the students were implementing those lessons into their everyday lives, and, and the way that they interact with other students that are different than them, and so um, that I, you know, kind of made me get over myself a little bit. And I was like, look, I'm going to I'm going to take on this challenge and see what we can do with it. And so um, it is to be, you know, served as a, as a companion children's book series to the curriculum. And so my within the curriculum, there are four different characters, all with different types of disabilities and backgrounds and ethnicities. And um, that was re- diversity was really important to me whenever I was uh, curating their their stories and um, and curating uh, their characters and their personality traits. And so um, the goal is to have one children's book per character. And so we've got the first character out. And obviously, I'm a little biased. And so I chose Josiah to be the first one, um, as inspired by my younger brother, who I, I mentioned earlier. So um, Josiah. Really Josiah is 17 now. He is. He so is. what does he feel, feel about seeing himself in a children's book? I mean, it's different than, if, you know, if he was still 9, 10 or whatever it may be. Right. But how does he feel about being your inspiration for the children's book? Uh, he likes the credit. He likes taking the credit. <laughs> <laughs> I, this past year, when I when I competed at Miss Mississippi in, in uh, last year as Miss USM, uh, I was, you know, honored to be given the Quality of Life Award, which is an award that's specifically for your social impact initiative. Um, and so there are several, seven finalists, and then, you know, you go through a separate interview process, and they they give out that award. And so that was a huge goal of mine, and I was really honored to be given that. But whenever I did, um, he made sure that he gave me a car, sent me a text afterwards, and said, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> I won the Quality of Life yeah. Award, even though you were the one on stage. And so um, we, we have a very playful and uh, relationship. And so uh, he, he, likes, he likes to take the credit for it. For That's sure. okay. That's the way younger siblings <laughs> okay. are anyway. Well, I mean, he can. He can take the credit for it. Rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so, for sure. But if you, but if you, he's not wearing the crown though. I don't see him out enjoying. Oh gosh, no. Enjoying the fruits of that labor. Okay. Where can we get, what's the name of the book? Josiah's Big Day. Um, and so you can get it. I finally, I'm not a techie person and I finally figured out how to um, get it on my website. So the website that I mentioned earlier, capablecurriculum.com, there's a shop tab and you can just buy it right off the website and I'll ship it to you and uh, get it to you as soon as I can. And then the same thing, you can click the link in my bio on my Instagram and it'll have a, a link for you to go to to purchase it. You also mentioned that you had a local um, illustrator too to sort of yes. join in. So it's a complete Mississippi inspired book. It's a Mississippi, yes. you're written by Mississippi the author. It's yes. illustrated by him. Mississippi Illustrator, was that important mm-hmm. for you? Absolutely. And and even in the creation of the curriculum, too, I worked very closely with Mississippi educators in writing that. Um, there were some art students at Oak Grove High School that were that did the artwork for the curriculum specifically. Um, I wanted the book to be a little bit different, so I did reach out to a, a local artist, Heath Klinky. So I'll give a little yeah. um, shout out to him. It's He owns the shop downtown in Hattiesburg. Um, so check that out for sure. He's incredibly talented and really brought it to life. What's the age range for kiddos for this book? Is it just kindergarten? Garden, right. It, elementary. Mostly, yeah, mostly elementary age students. The curriculum is K through three, and so the book kind of targets that um, that age group as well. But you know, I've had older kids that have fourth and fifth graders read it too. So, 
So when you when you I would assume that writing a children's book is so different than anything else. So yeah. how did you come up with the story, Vivian? I mean, it, did you sit down with your brother and sort of think through a day, or or what inspired you with the story? Uh, personal experience, honestly, or not my personal experience, but the personal experience of, of Josiah. He So essentially, just a, a quick little um, synopsis of the book is it's about field day and, you know, these four friends, Josiah being the main character, is so excited about it. And they look at the list of activities to sign up for and they realize that none of it is wheelchair accessible and that he's not going to be able to participate. And he's really disappointed. And so he and his friends all get together and decide to go talk to uh, their PE coach, which is the person that is in charge of field day, and ask for, you know, more inclusive activities. And they present a list themselves, They're very diplomatic about it, um, and present a list themselves, and um, and she takes that into consideration, and you know, is like, you know, I, I never tried to be discriminatory. I just didn't. I wasn't thinking about it. And so, thank you for bringing this issue to me, and um, and for standing up for yourselves, and um, and so then in the end, they they have the inclusive activities, and Josiah is able to participate, and he wins an award for a relay race. Um, and so it was while that specific scenario didn't necessarily happen, there have been so many times where uh, Josiah has been on the sidelines at PE or you know during recess, and there's really nothing that he can do. And um, children have a really short attention span, and so when they're running around and playing, they're not necessarily thinking about including the kid in the wheelchair that can't go play on the monkey bars like they can. And so, you know, th- that has happened a lot. And so those experiences that I kind of saw him go through is what inspired the, the book. Well, it sounds like some, where can we get it? You mentioned your website. Is yes. it also Amazon or any of those type of places? Oh, we're or? working on Amazon. So hopefully pretty soon, gotcha. hopefully pretty soon it'll be on Amazon. But right now my website is going to be the best place. Unless you know me personally, just shoot me a text message. <laughs> or is, there any, is it anywhere in um, Hattiesburg to pop in and, and oh, snag it? Actually, it is. So T-Bones in downtown Hattiesburg. It's a coffee shop, record store, bookstore, um, my favorite coffee shop. And so we were able to partner with them and get them uh, to sell it for us. So that's it's when you really think great. about um, youth in wheelchairs, you may not think that they can be as active. But, man, if you remember back here on Good Things, mm-hmm. we had the Mississippi Youth, uh, I mean, uh, Wildcats, or no, um, Wildcats, Mississippi Wildcats. And they are the only um, wheelchair basketball team in the state of Mississippi, and they compete in the National Wheelchair Basketball League. They are athletes. Mm-hmm. Like, they are absolute studs. Mm-hmm. And so when given the opportunity to, you know, try to figure it out or, you know, or, or be um, involved in the same things that we do. It may look a little different. Right. But, man, it takes different, you know, strengths and abilities. I right. remember one of them, uh, Vivian, talking about how um, some of their friends got in a wheelchair and thought they were going to play basketball against them, and they just couldn't do it. It takes right. a completely different sort of skill and all right. the things like that. But it was very humbling, too, for their friends to recognize, dude, mm-hmm. these are athletes, and they're, you know, they mm-hmm. are completely perfected their skill of yeah. playing their sport the way that, you know, they can they can play it. Right. And, it, and it's important for them to, to recognize that, too. And, you know... Healthy looks different on everybody, and and athleticism looks different on everybody, and so they're just um, using their body to its fullest capacity, and the way in which it works may look a little different, it may be a little different, but they're using their body to the best of their capacity just as anybody else would be that is, you know, playing baseball or you know a dancer or a cheerleader or whatever that looks like and so it's just uh it's just different but you're essentially you're, we're all we're all human and we're all just doing our best yeah we're doing our best and i think parents do their best too and again mm-hmm. when you don't know what you don't know and one i had one parent tell me one of the best ways that you can sort of encourage your children with inclusive uh, or diversity is have diverse children books right i mean yes. we kind of go mm-hmm. straight to our you know, just the the ones that we always do were sort of passed mm-hmm. down. And if you, even if you don't have um, a youth with, live, you know, in a wheelchair in your home or know somebody, just having those those that just sort of feel natural, they just come mm-hmm. into your, you know, your um, children's book there at home or just have the different kinds. Anyway, that's an easy way just to spark up a conversation, mm-hmm. introduce your kids. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be this whole sit down, go through, just... Right. You know, have the story will sort of help and sort of tell itself. Mm-hmm. I always, I always like, oh, that was one thing. I, could, I was like, I can do that. I can have diverse books within my children's right. library at home. And so we'll have to make sure that we add yours uh, to our list for sure. And yeah. I feel like folks should also add them to their um, libraries, whether it's at their Sunday schools or whether it's in their, um, you know, different places at, at school. You mm-hmm. should have that diverse. Right. Even if you're not, you know, even if there's not a child in the in the area um, right. then you know that's in a wheelchair right. all right all right this miss mississippi we mentioned 22 weeks away what are you doing to get prepared or how do you prepare this far out or are you preparing this yeah. far out <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, look, I always say it's a 24-hour day, seven, seven day a week, 24-hour, seven-day week job um, in terms of prep. So it's been all year round. I've been preparing since I walked off the stage last year, to be honest. Um, so, uh, you know, just the regular things, staying in shape, uh, keeping myself dancing. I dance for my talent. Um, you know, I, I'm continuing my education. I'm starting grad school actually in a couple days. <laughs> so um, hopefully that, you know, that plays a part in interview skills and my ability to um, talk about my passions. And uh, Miss America at the end of the day is a scholarship organization. And that's the only reason I'm able to go back to grad school right now. So I'm very thankful thankful for that. Um, so just, you know, all, all the, the regular things, just, you know, keeping myself sharp and, and ready to go. All righty. Well, we're not ready to let you go. We got a little bit more with Vivian O'Neill coming up next here on Good Things. I follow the Good Things wants to encourage you to go on an adventure in Mississippi in 2022. So go to visitmississippi.org to find out more. We're learning more about Miss Hattiesburg 2022, Miss Vivian O'Neill, but she was also your first runner up for Miss Mississippi, I think last year. Yes. What an exciting sort of time for you. Okay. So I think this is one thing people don't understand about all these young girls who mm. get, you know, go through it once and then come back out and go, you know what, I'm coming back for another try. Because now there is only so many years that you, that right. a young girl can compete for Miss Mississippi and how, yeah. how when, what's the age? You know, they just changed it. So I want to say, and I, I don't want to be incorrect here, but I think they just changed it from 19 to 26. I think it used to be 18 to 25 or 18 to 24, something like that. Um, but they just changed it and uh, gave them one additional year. So so you've had the pleasure of this will be your fourth yes. Miss Mississippi. Yes. When was your first? In 2017, it was the 60th anniversary. And now you're coming back for the, well, no, it's Miss America's 100th. I was yes, say, yes. I was like, hold on, I'm doing the math, but <laughs> no. I'm thinking, you have aged out, girlfriend. <laughs> in, the, in that respect. Okay, what does keep you coming back for? What is it about the organization or just the whole process? Because for someone who's never done pageants, I think I did one in my high school because that's what you would beauty and bow or whatever. Uh -huh. It was, it was nerve-wracking to the point of making you want to vomit on <laughs> stage. So obviously that's not, you know, wasn't for necessarily clicked for me. And I think for us who don't get it, we feel like it would be so stressful and nerve wracking. Why would you keep doing it? Mm -hmm. But why do you keep doing it? You know, there are, this is a very multifaceted answer. Um, one of the biggest things, the scholarship dollars, I, I've earned over, gosh, probably well over $10,000 $10, in scholarships um, over, you know, my years competing. And that's, that's been such a blessing in my life. You know, I have three siblings and so, and one, one graduated and then I graduated and I'm in grad school now. And then I have another sister that's, uh, that just started college. And so, it, you know, and it gets expensive and it adds up. And so that, that was such a blessing to, to have the, the opportunity to earn scholarships that way, but also the service aspect. I think, um, y you know, I was very shy and very quiet as a child and I um, I consider myself to be pretty outgoing now. Very li Vivian means lively, and I think I live up to that name. Um, but I, I mean, I, I credit that mostly to the Miss America organization, and it's you know been a transformation that you know my parents and all the people around me too can attest to. Um, I mean, it's it's completely changed my life. I think it's the only reason that I got that job in Washington D.C. I think it's the the reason that I majored in public relations, and you know that my love for people and communication and um, having these face to face interactions and personal connections and you know hands on experiences is so important to me. Um, is because Miss America gave me an outlet in which to step out of that comfort zone and um, really provided me with mentors and leaders and role models in order to shape me into that person to to accomplish those things and so that, that that's what keeps me coming back and, and it's just exciting to see uh, you, you know look look how much I grew in in this six month period or this year long period or three long period or you know whatever it is and so um, it's exciting I mean you know I, I wonder where I'll be a year from now I wonder where I'll, where I'll be in June and um, and, and kind of where that's going to take me and where those opportunities are going to take me so um, those are those are definitely lots of things Things, but those would be my top two that I keep coming back to. For and sure. everyone we have here on Good Things that wears a crown that <clears throat> ends up going to buy for Miss Mississippi or when we have the good pleasure or good fortune of having Miss Mississippi herself in the studio, they all say the same thing. Mm -hmm. They all say that it helped them either come out of their comfort zone mm -hmm. or, you know, it gave them so many life skills that right. just, you know, are beyond it. And then there is a sisterhood to it that yes. I think that a lot yeah. of the contestants, you know, you, you're all over the state. And mm -hmm. then you come for that, you know, and it has to be more like a boot camp. How long were y'all? How, <laughs> how long are y'all in Vicksburg for for the actual pageant? Like, when will you go? And is, it, is it a week or is it two weeks? How yes. long are you there? It's a week long. So typically, we start. We have events starting on the Saturday. 
um, a week before the Saturday of crowning. So I think this year maybe that's the 18th, 18th through the 25th. And so we're there on that day. Some girls get there a couple days early just to settle in a little bit. Um, But, I mean, and it is packed full from the second you wake up to the second you go to bed, which is pretty early and pretty late. (laughs) So um, so it's a a packed schedule. But that that really does – you know, pull you together and make you closer. And when they say that it is a sisterhood, it, it absolutely is. It is honestly, um, it, it's like a, it's like another sorority. I've found some of my best friends through that program, and you know, we we keep up with one another even when they're done competing or as we continue competing. And uh, nothing really brings you together like somebody who will fix your hair, or pick something out of your teeth before you go on stage. Because <laughs> I've definitely had that happen. <laughs> that's definitely the side of a of a true friend. Yeah. So <laughs> for for families listening to Good Things, Vivian, I mean, we just hear headlines or see things change in terms Mm -hmm. of uh, the Miss America organization sort of making some shifts and changes. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who still has a young uh, daughter or a young girl in their family that wants to do pageants or would do pageants? Would it still be something you would encourage? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, Miss America's purpose in making these changes was to um, pave the way for the next 100 years for the modern woman. And so it's important that just with anything else, with any other organization, with any other business, you have to evolve and change with the times. And that's exactly what the Miss America organization is doing. And um, I think they're setting a really positive uh, precedent for programs that may come up in the future, just kind of as their going going towards the next 100 years of Miss America and I think it's really important and it's all about scholarship and service and, and empowering young women and giving young women the tools that they need to be successful and to to make an impact in this world first pageant when was that for you Vivian seventh grade I did I did a just a pageant at school and that kind of happened accidentally and um and I was a hot mess I barred my dress didn't have anybody to do my hair and makeup until the last minute um but Miss Mississippi is is an icon all across the state and so you know as a little girl that was a goal of mine and a dream of mine but I never actually thought I would be able to do it and so um Gosh, if I think about telling the little seventh grader that she would, you know, be on the Miss Mississippi stage one day, I probably wouldn't believe her. Would you ever believe that you would have been runner up? Oh, gosh, no. I, so I, I never even made the, the top 15 before. And I competed two years prior. And last year was, you know, last year was my third year. And um, I, I'd never really won any extra awards or preliminary awards or been in the top 10, top 15, anything like that. And then all of a sudden I was first alternate. And uh, I think... You know, it just goes to show you if you you work really hard that it is even if maybe logistics are against you or circumstances are against you, if you work really hard and um, and it's meant to be and, you know, um, you really focus on being the best version of yourself that you can be, that things things like that can happen. You have to find a way to like set goals or get excited Mm -hmm. about small things, because I think there was a statistic that was like you have. A better chance of your son being or playing in the NFL or yes, whatever the Super Bowl. Than, than your daughter, um, you know, being crowned to either whatever the state title is or even, right. you know, Miss America, because there's only one crown. Mm-hmm. I mean, which is fine. So do you have to have that like conversation with yourself, Vivian, of, you know, knowing that you go and put your best foot forward and finding pride in maybe walking away if you don't have the crown? I mean, I think first alternate would be the worst, personally. I mean, second, <laughs> top 10, You're but so like, close. You, I mean, you were <laughs> so close. And then you, then you, I know you don't, but it's like, if she gets sick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or abducted by aliens. No, we would never wish that on, on no. Miss Mississippi. But, but, I mean, no, I'm kidding. But, I mean, was there like this moment of just really first alternate? You know, honestly, that entire week, I was more relaxed than I'd ever been in my entire life. It felt like an out of body experience. Like I was just in the twilight zone or something because I was just, I was so calm. And everybody asked me what that moment was like when they're taking forever to announce who's first alternate and who's the winner. And as I'm standing there, you know, holding Holly's hands and I I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't nervous. It was so strange, and you would think that would be the most nerve wracking uh, moment, but you know, it, it really wasn't. And you know, it yeah, you you do kind of think about oh, you know, I'm, I'm so close, but I you know, I, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm that's a that's a really big part of my life is you know my faith, and so I just have to believe that there's there's a reason. There's a reason for everything. There's a reason that it happened, and I'm you know I'm so proud of Holly, and I'm so excited for her. And you know that's that's the really special thing about this organization is these girls really do cheer one another on. Whoever it is, they're gonna they're gonna get behind the girl that they're sending to Miss America and who's representing them. And I think that's um, that's really important. And so uh, you know I was given this opportunity 
opportunity to, to go back and compete. And so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. And I, I'm excited for that opportunity. So everything happens for a reason. 22 weeks will fly by. Yeah. Oh, it will. <laughs> before you know it, um, Miss Vivian. Well, and until then, you are still Miss um, Hattiesburg mm-hmm. and get to enjoy that and start back school. What's your grad, uh, grad school in? What are you going back to grad school for? Higher education and student affairs. Higher education and student affairs. And Mm -hmm. if anyone wants to get your book or maybe your uh, capable curriculum where they can put it in their classrooms for inclusion and diversity, where do we find that? CapableCurriculum.com. You can purchase the book. You can download the curriculum. There's virtual resources, all my contact information. Uh, You can purchase the book at T-Bones. You can find it at the University Library on Southern Mrs. Hattiesburg campus. Um, It's kind of sprinkled throughout different school libraries and elementary schools across the state. So... But CapableCurriculum.com is the best place. Well, we look forward to having you back here on Good Things. I think even if you don't walk away with the crown, Miss Vivian, you'll be up to some good no matter what you choose to do. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All righty. You guys stick with us. We've got a few more good things for you.